Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here with me today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support and for sharing my videos and taking your time to learn different things. I really enjoy learning something new. And many of you probably do too, and that's why you're here. I was asked the question about volcanoes, if they are connected in any way to one another, and many of them are. I couldn't find the exact article that I originally learned about this. This is the closest one I could find. Think of the Hawaiian Islands as an area where um, the magma comes up from the mantle plume and forms all the different volcanic islands. Off the coast of India and Africa, that's another area. Um, the Alpine Mountains. Think of a tree that's growing upside down. you got the huge body of magma that comes up and separates into different directions and creates these different volcanoes. The original article I stumbled upon was um, the Mediterranean in Europe. And it, it was amazing. The mantle plume, the tree branches that came up. I can't find it now because it was a really good example. This is what caused the breakup of the continents. Um, the last formation was Pangaea. Here we have an image of the breakup that's slowly going on in Africa. And you've heard about the giant cracks that are opening up. Um, the mantle plume was originally, let me show you, over here in India. And we got the decan traps. Yeah, some of that magma is like, um, I believe, a 100 miles deep. Anyways, the uh, the tree, as you want to call it, as I'm going to call it, of the magma, actually extends all the way over here to Africa. And now it's creating um, the, the breakup of Africa. And like I said, we got the Hawaiian Islands. A really large area up by the Mediterranean Sea. I mean, it's amazing. I wish I could find the original image because it showed plumes, like I said, like a tree, an upside down tree, the roots of a tree, um, pointing up, coming up. And they were throughout this whole area. And yeah, um, Italy, Greece, and it extended all the way through here to the um, Canary Islands. Um, the mantle plume as it came up through the eons is what closed up the Tethy Sea and created the Mediterranean Sea. Another area, you might find this interesting because it goes into um, Yellowstone. Let me bring this over. Now we got a plume that starts over here um, by the Gulf of California. You, those have been around for a while may remember this, how the magma plume comes up from the Gulf of California. And it's actually along the California um, coast. There's actually magma down here way deep where the San Andreas Fault is at. Well, the pressure of it is creating, um, yeah, the separation of um, Baja California from Mexico and this whole area is moving uh, probably north a little northwest that's because of the magma plume and that's why you got all the volcanoes along the Cascadia fault zone yeah they're all connected real deep too but this is probably for now the best image I'll probably find it later showing the tree roots coming up from the uh, mantle of the earth here we have an image of the Yellowstone Mantle Plume. Starts out down here by the Gulf of California. Let me bring this, make this bigger. Okay, and these are all the sensors that they use to uh, do their research. You can see it comes up and goes all the way up to the Yellowstone um, hotspot, the caldera. That's that purple line. All right, so here's a series of other images, and this goes down probably about 2,700 or more kilometers, which would be about 1,700 miles. And it says here, slow anomalies are in the red, while fast anomalies are shown in blue, with depth indicated 
to the left of each slice. Note that the same color scale is used for all depth slices. The dash circles show the location of the structure as we inter interpret as a plume. It also shows um, the slowest texture in each slice and continues from CMB, which is really deep, uh, to the surface. So let's move this up. Okay, and this is slow moving. Um, and it's circled in red right here, magma plumes. This is 2,700 kilometers. And it shows uh, the areas as it goes up. We got 1,900 kilometers. And then we got 2,500 kilometers. 1,500 kilometers on the right. And notice the direction that it's moving. Okay. Uh, 2,300 kilometers, 1,300. And up at the top, which is, what do I have the image? I'll have to go to another one. Here we have another one, 2,500 kilometers, moving its way up. And it says here, depth cross-section through the plume structure, showing its connection to the Yellowstone hotspot. Now, over here at the bottom, that would be the Gulf of California. The location of the cross section is shown by the purple line, uh, which I already showed you. I'll go back here in a minute with black and orange circles indicating the position and the cross section. Long story short. Okay. So we got the plume very deep under the ground coming up from the Gulf of California and going up to the Yellowstone hotspot. Now I did read where the plume that comes up is about 250 kilometers wide. So that would be about 155 miles across. So if you could take this image and lay it on top of this image here. Now it's actually probably with all the different little tree branches coming up much wider. And then we got other things that are going on, which is real interesting. We have part of the Farlon plate which is subducting underneath the North American plate, which has either broken off or made this mantle plume stall for the Yellowstone caldera. So because of these tree branches, which is not shown here, yeah, we got all the other past eruptions along the Snake River Plateau. You can see how the Farlon plate is circling back up and around. When a lot of different papers or people talk about Yellowstone, they talk about the last major eruption, but they don't talk about the recent eruptions. For example, here's the Snake River Plateau. And this one area here, um, Craters of the Moon, probably erupted only 2,000 years ago. Um, the Black Butte Crater Lava Field, that was probably about 12,000 years ago. Um, let's see, we got, um, Hell's Half Acre, which erupted probably 4,000, uh, to maybe 5,200 years ago. And I talked about, let's see, where is it? Pitchstone Plateau. Let's see if I can get Google Earth to go there. Okay, right here. Now that is South uh, maybe southwest of West Thumb at, there at Yellowstone Lake. The Pitchstone Plateau erupted about 70,000 years ago, and it produced uh, lava flows um, that covered the size of um, Washington, D.C., and it's 100 feet thick. So they have all these tree roots that are coming up, and a while ago, which all my notes here are gone, um, there was eruptions along um, the northern edge of the caldera. They believe that uh, because of the plate movement, um, the lava, the magma that's under the ground, is probably up in the northern area of the caldera, the, the outside edge and moving north. So with all these little tree roots, it just depends on where the pressure is applied, where it gets really brittle and where one of the tree branches decides it wants to come through the earth. Another reason they know that the magma is coming up 
deep from the mantle of the earth is because of this eruption here at Pitchstone Plateau is because olivine was found in the lava flows. Olivine is a green type of crystal. Here it says new basalt samples from the Yellowstone Plateau volcano field provide evidence for some of the most primitive liquids yet recovered in the region. Uh, the yield clues regarding mantle processing. They also found it along the Snake River Plateau at Warm River. The samples they took, they compared it to the olivine that they found in, in Hawaii. And the temperature was somewhere around uh, 1,327 degrees Celsius. Um, or as low as 1,264 degrees. And they figured if the mantle potential temperature was right, it appeared to pro approach an olivine control line, um, which was 1,610 degrees Celsius. So the mantle plume interpretation for the Yellowstone hot spot track. These calculations presume that primitive melts have equilibrium with the mantle um, olivine. So they concluded that the Yellowstone hotspot is indeed a, uh, compared to ambient mantle. Here we have another image of the Yellowstone hotspot. What it does is it forms a secondary chamber. Um, yeah, and again, let me make that bigger. And that would be down here and it comes up through these little tree roots, I guess you can say an upside down tree root. And then, yeah, this is how we got the craters of the moon, Hell's Half Acre, etc. Um, the recent image that they showed for the hot spot, um, just below the secondary chamber, let me show you that one, created this mushroom form. This is not a very good image um, they're constantly finding out new things but yeah it creates more little tree roots um, this is what they call the sill yeah um, yeah and then it comes up over here going towards the uh, northeast where it's currently extending and then you know we got the other trees coming up which they don't show here conveniently I think that was probably on purpose showing uh, going through the Snake River Plateau. And another image. I don't know why when they did their research, why they ended it there at the Montana border. I think if they would have extended out farther, uh, they would have found that it, yeah, this um, magma actually extends way out towards Montana. So I was thinking about how the plume comes up somewhere out here in the Gulf of California, actually a little bit beyond, and how it's affecting the San Andreas Fault Zone. We got spreading here because of this mantle plume. Um, yeah, um, what would it take for it to create a large earthquake? There is magma um, under the ground along the San Andreas Fault Zone there in um, Southern California, deep down. But what would it take for that magma suddenly decide that it is extending all the way up along the coast here to create a large earthquake? And if there is a large earthquake, um, how would that affect Yellowstone? It probably definitely would affect Yellowstone. We do know that the core of the earth is heating up, which would be heating up that magma coming up through, uh, yeah, the earth's crust creating those tree tree roots. Basically, when you got plate tectonics going on, any area where the um, plates are colliding, you know, the ring of fire, you're going to have, yeah, it going down deep into the mantle, and then it rises up again. I'm going to try and make this bigger. This is only something new that they have been researching. Like I said, when I found the paper, which I can't find now for the Mediterranean Sea and the um, Caribbean, um, the tree branches that were coming up was just amazing. So just think about it. All that magma underneath just the state of California, there's over 20 volcanoes and it lists them here. And they're all connected. 
to the magma body down there in the mantle of the earth, each with its own small plume, that little tree branch that comes up. They're not connected side by side. They're connected from the depths of the earth. So anyways, that's all I have for you right now. I hope I explained it a little bit. Maybe I just made you more confused. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you.